To number one American hero shares her final words, Tenko Shimura finally speaks up and Class 1A begins their preparations. Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. So My Hero Academia Chapter 334 is finally out. And with it, we not only get to witness All For One's struggle for control over Shigaraki's body, but we also get to see the aftermath of his devastating duel with Star and Stripe. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, we saw the shirtless, schizophrenic, Shiggy Boy All For One hybrid formerly known as Tenko Shimura successfully steal Lady Liberty, Star and Stripe's quirk, decaying her in the process. However, unbeknownst to all for Shigaraki, Star had pulled out her Uno Reverse card. As it turns out, just before Shigaraki for one could reach her, she created the rule that her quirk would revolt against all other quirks. This resulted in a giant Star monster taking form inside the vestige world of all for one and like the absolute beast she is, started to go to town on all of his stolen quirks. The strong them in the process. With this, all Shiggy for one started to panic as he realized for the first time in his life he was truly bamboozled. As he can give and take quirks, but he can't just straight up destroy them. As Star's body was on the verge of being fully decayed, she let out one final heroic smile and salute towards her comrades, as she thanked them for their help throughout the years. She also internally thanked All Might, for not only saving her life, but for inspiring her into becoming the hero she is today, saying, this is my way of paying you back. And this chapter ended with All For One being bombarded by a barrage of fighter jet lasers externally as he fought against Star or the Ghost of All Might as he called her internally. And this is where chapter 334 picks up. This chapter opens up directly where the last chapter left off, as we see the jets that previously had Shigaraki pinned down are now chasing after a newly winged Shigaraki. It's revealed that Shigaraki stole the wing quirk from his Nomu before blowing him up two chapters prior. During this brief escape from the laser fire, Shigaraki continues to look for someone to whom he can pass the quirk New Order onto before his consciousness disappears. As this is going on, we also get a quick shot of All For One facing off against against Star, who comments how he can sense All Might's menacing presence in Star. But back in the real world, we then see Shigaraki use all of his strength to propel himself forward at high speeds, and he manages to escape all of the pilots' field of vision. With no way of catching up to Shigaraki now, the pilots lament their failed encounter and the loss of Star, as they remember how she said before the fight that she would send their bodies back to their families. The head pilot then comments about how Star has surely surpassed All Might and has become the greatest hero of all time. Which I suppose you could put up for debate, but in all honesty, from a viewer's perspective, she still doesn't hold a candle to All Might in my eyes. Following this, the story then cuts on over to inside of a house, where we see a man and a woman watching TV. How exhilarating. It's revealed that both the man and the woman are former convicts, who have escaped from prison and don't want to be involved in trouble anymore. The man's name is revealed to be Kashiko Kashi, and he is a former thief and serial killer. However, unfortunately for this simple duo, peace was never an option, as before long, Shigaraki would crash into the house, destroying it upon impact, and in seeing Kashi, he sees his opportunity to escape. Shigaraki himself notes how he suspects that Star has created a rule that would prohibit New Order from coexisting with other quirks, so he plans to steal Kashi's quirk and then give him New Order so he could have control over New Order's user. Now, I'm not not exactly sure what Shigaraki means by this, but if it means that All For One can control a person whose quirk he has stolen in some way, well, one, that's a pretty fucking big deal and we need to talk about it, and two, this could be the explanation for who the UA traitor is. If All For One stole someone's quirk, imprinted himself into it, and then gave it back to them, then it is possible he could control them and get information on the school without them fully knowing what's going on. 
on. But I'm still unclear what Shigaraki meant by this control comment. So we'll have to wait and see the official translation to bring this theory any further. But anyway, as soon as Shigaraki tries to transfer new order, an image of Star appears in his mind and calls him an idiot. The vestige Star reveals that since the order was that new order was going to revolt against other quirks, it ended up wearing itself out in the process after having to face the countless multiple quirks that all for one possesses. In other words, New Order ended up battling all of the other quirks until they beat it out of existence. Star then goes on to mention how she regrets not being able to destroy all of the quirks, but she sends one last message to Shigaraki and all for one. As long as the will to protect exists, the determination of a hero will be passed on. Surely, someone will be able to put an end to the boat of you. In hearing this, All For One simply replies that he doesn't care, and that he has won this battle simply by coming out alive. But just after saying this, deep down in his consciousness, a voice speaks out, saying, for sure, some hero is going to. And with this, we see a young Tenko Shimura in the Vestige world, surrounded by dozens of hands. And before the scene fades away, young Tenko leaves us with one last word, Midoriya. Following this, we see the fighter jets arrive in Japan, and it's reported that he continued to search for Shigaraki after he ran away, but his whereabouts are still currently unknown. The news of Star's death, the strongest woman in the world, and the revelation of the true power of All For One is broadcast around the world. And after this broadcast, it is officially decided that no country will send any more reinforcements to Japan, as they want to prioritize their own safety. We then see Salam, the hero from Egypt and the hero from the My Hero World Heroes movie, is outraged by this decision. I also have to mention that commenter Bennett Hibner 100% called this in the last chapter breakdown. You absolutely nailed it. But anyway, after all of this, we then see that the leader of the pilots is reporting the events of Shiggy's fight with Star to the police and to All Might, who says he wishes he could have met with Cassie. However, he claims that her and their efforts were not in vain, because the fighter jets have the technology to detect a target's vital signs, analyze the quirks they are facing, and store that information. Meaning that since they survived Shigaraki's encounter in one piece, it could be possible that they could discover some of Shigaraki's weaknesses. The story then cuts to the next day, where we see All Might in the Class 1A dorm room letting everyone know that Shigaraki's completion has been delayed. He was supposed to reach perfect condition by tomorrow, but now he will probably stay unable to move for at least one more week. So they all need to make the most of this time so they can finally defeat Shigaraki and All For One. And with this, Chapter 334 comes to an end as we see this image of a better looking and seemingly fully recovered Midoriya in his UA sports gear alongside Bakugo and Todoroki. Overall, this was an alright chapter. To be honest, the most recent few chapters haven't been the most entertaining in my opinion and it really seemed more like a quick way to one one, nerf Shigaraki somewhat, and two, give an excuse why the international heroes don't join in the final fight. It really felt like a waste of America's number one hero, especially considering we will more than likely never see the ramifications associated with the United States of America losing their number one hero. I mean, that's gotta have a huge impact on the country, yet we will probably never see any of it. Basically, all of the story's real connections to the United States and its heroes pretty much have died with Star, which is a huge shame, considering we just spent the last few chapters introducing and building up the hype and power behind all of them. Like, if Star is the caliber of their number one hero, then who's number two, three, four, five, and so on and so on? I don't know, I'm just a bit disappointed with how they handled the whole international hero situation. All for one, losing some of his quirks was interesting, yet it doesn't hold much weight in the story. We only saw a couple of his quirks in action in the first place, so unless the majority of the ones we have seen are gone, then him losing the others will have no effect on us as viewers. 
Tenko Shimura making an appearance was definitely a shocking twist, however, and I'm excited to see if he will remain visible in the Vestige world now that some of the quirks are gone. I guess only time will tell. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.